they're yours. Hit that one more time. I am, I am the, the number one determinant, number one determinant of, the of the success or failure. Or failure. Here we go. Of my, of my student. Hey, y'all, you have a strong summer. Kick some butt next year. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you. That's the mindset. That's the attitude. Love you guys. And we are live. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to week 134 of the virtual AP Leadership Academy. Let me see who we got here this morning. Glad you all are here. We got uh, Takesha High, Vanessa Zeskin. Yolanda McKinney, Jasmine Harris, Rashad Davis, Principal Otis Kitchen II, Principal Carlos Baggage. He's going to be joining me soon, too. Looking forward to that. We got uh, Darnell McElveen up there in Minnesota. Uh, Hotep uh, Darnell. Uh, Michael, ben- uh, Michael Benton. Dr. Sheikah Houston. Doc- uh, Principal Dr. McKee Vegeta. And it just jumped on me. We got uh, Lisa Jordette, I think it is. Um, you're a little bit under the weather, Yolanda, but you still got that fire. So I appreciate you get well soon. Got Darlene Pettit. Dr. Tammy Taylor's in the building. Darlene Pettit's in the building. Hit the share button, folks, as you come in. Hit that share button. Hit that retweet button. Hopefully my audio and video are good with me being remote today. We got John Few in the building. Ronald Pugh, Lysandra Brackens, Cami Berry, Dana D in the building. Rodney Richardson, Arlette Mello Johnson. Melissa Jones, Chu New in the building. We got uh, Nyerka Coy Bush, my man, Principal Ronnie Harvey, still doing big things at Louisiana Secondary School's Principal of the Year. Just got just he was just in D.C. with all the national, the the state level um, principals of the year secondary, uh, getting another award and just being with the with the colleagues out there. So good stuff, sir. Keep on doing your thing. Lisa B. Woods Herman is in the building. Ann Rhodes is in the building. Deborah Jenkins, Josh Tovar representing MPA Jaguars is in the building. Tony McClenney, Raquel Whitney, Sean, Principal Sean Hurt is in the building. Y'all, you know, you, know you got to check out Sean Hurt, Principal Hurt, every Saturday morning at 10 o'clock, followed by Create and Educate with Dr. Sheikah Houston and Dr. Tammy Taylor. Um, at 10 30 so that's um every saturday morning and then i come on at 10 55 and then josh tovar and dean packard on sunday nights at seven i didn't tell them all yet but we're gonna do a, a program in the spring where it's just all of us i didn't tell them i'm telling them now right i guess i'm requesting i told josh but i didn't tell she could tell me and and, and sean that i want to i want to bring us together to close the school year out and it's just us, and we you know, we gonna kick it. So we'll talk about that later. Uh, we got Marsha Poe in the building out there in San Diego. Radika Dinesh, Cam, uh, Cammy Berry, uh, Scott Wiley is in the building. William Turner, T- Stacy Joseph, hit that share button, folks. Let them know. Hit that retweet button. Let them know we're here. I'm on the road. I'm get, I'm gonna do a keynote at um uh, one o'clock Eastern time, but you know. Nothing stops this freight train, man. Yeah, you know, I'm going to take this off, put the suit on, and, um, you know, we're going to get down out here with 100 black men, 100 black men in metropolitan Houston. Looking forward to that. We're talking about the plight, the state of the black man child uh, in America. So I'm looking forward to that. We got Alan Cowart, State Principal Stacy Mabry. She's going to be on here real soon. Um, where we at? Diva, all for you is in the building. Lisa DeBose Walker, Jennifer White. Um, where we at? Where we at? Dr. Houston said it's great. So, yeah, we're going to make that happen. I'll reach out to y'all real soon so we can lock a date in. Terry Williams is in the building. Will- Lily Lanier, Cynthia Farmer, Constance Connie Sturman is in the building. Jill uh, Parfait is in the building. Tiffany Curry, who else we got? Uh, 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 Dr. Ray Luce. 
Lucy, I got to call you at some point, sir. We're going we gonna to get you on here, man. I know you got some things to share with our folks. Oh, we got my wife, the queen, man. She's not in this building. Normally, I say in the bill. She ain't in this building, man. I'm on the road. I can't wait to see her tomorrow. Right? So my wife, Kimberly Broughton Cafele, in the building. In the, in the building in Jersey while I'm out here holding it down in Houston, Texas. We got Sherelle Benders in the build. Good to see you, Sherelle Benders. Uh, VP Sherelle Benders. I'm going to talk about um, my visit to Newark in a little while. Cynthia Gonzalez is in the building. What time is this? It's 11.01 Eastern time. It's time to get started. Hey, y'all, hit that share button. Hit that retweet button. Lou Saunders in the building. Got to gotta big him up. Hit that retweet button. Let them know we are here. So with that being said, it's top of the hour. Let me say to everybody formally, I'm going to assume that everybody in this hotel is awake now. It's 10 o'clock, man. If they ain't awake, I'll be their alarm clock as I say to them, good morning. Greetings. Welcome to week 134 of the virtual AP Leadership Academy. And as I say every week, I don't know about you. But as I also say every week, I think I know about you. You tuned in. You checked in. I keep running into people all over America. Do you hear me? All over America. I go nowhere where someone doesn't say or folks don't say, I watch you on a Saturday. I, 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 this is the first time I get to see you in person. I watch you on Saturday. Sometimes they say, I thought you were short. Right. You know, so 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 it's everybody's watching this. Right. So but but I want despite that and despite your familiarity with me, I still got to remind you that even in this hotel, I'm getting ready to wake the folks up. I'm on fire. Woo! Whew. That's how I'm feeling, man. That's how I'm feeling. Y'all wake up in this 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 hotel. This 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 y'all up. <laughs> hey y'all, hit that share button. Hit that retweet button. You know I, I say to you, and I'm gonna keep saying it as long as I'm doing this broadcast that I let you know I'm on fire because I want to remind you that you got to bring your own fire. That's why you got to have your fire. If you don't have the fire, how the staff gonna have fire? How the students gonna have? How's the school going to have fire? There's got to be that, that energy that you bring with you that exudes out of you. That enthusiasm, that excitement, that passion for this work. It's got to be there. So you got to bring them flames. Hey, y'all, my quick motivational message slash commentary. I just want I, I to talk briefly about yesterday and last week we'll keep this quick because i got a dynamite guest coming on here hit the share button hit the retweet and and folks tell me hit the like button right hit the like they tell me that matters so hit the like button especially on youtube right especially on youtube hit that like button right so so here's the thing y'all yesterday i was in philadelphia right like y'all see this this not the phillies now I'm in Houston. They just beat the Phillies in the World Series. This ain't this ain't no Phillies, man. This the Philadelphia Stars, man. Negro League, right? Negro League. Matter of fact, which one am I wearing? This no, nah, this the Philadelphia Giants. There's there, there's two Philadelphia teams. So I'm wearing the Giants, right? So I'm in Philly yesterday, and um, man, the center uh, the center for Black Educator Development. It was it, they they they, uh, they they put together this conference called Black Men Educators Convening, led by my man Sharif El Meki, who's been on this platform. If you didn't see that one, go back to YouTube and scroll down and look for Sharif. Let me tell y'all something, man. And if and, it, and if and if it's somebody at the convening right now watching, because a whole lot of them young men, a whole lot of them brothers were telling me, "Oh, I watch you every Saturday." Well, well, turn turn that thing off and pay attention to that conference. <laughs> but but I'm but I'm gonna say this. I felt like I was at the Million Man March, y'all. I did. It wasn't a million men, but it was close to a thousand. I did a panel with my man, Principal L, who's Salome Thomas L, my man, Dr. Kwame Simmons, and and and, and another brother. 
and and it was it was just different. I'm just gonna leave it there. It was just different being in that space, being in that environment, and and talking about nothing but black men in education. Just the many different facets of black men being in classrooms with black young people. That's an important conversation which never gets old, never can be fully exhausted. There's so much to talk about. So I had a phenomenal, phenomenal day, not just speaking, let me say that, but going to sessions and listening to others. That's important. Let me holler. If, if there's someone out here watching right now, you're a speaker, maybe you're one of my speaker colleagues out here and you don't reveal yourself on the stream like I do on other people's stream, you you too big time. So you you lay back in the cut and make it look like you don't watch. Yeah, I, 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 I peep you, right? See, sometimes we think when we get to a certain level, we too big to tune in the watch and let people see us watching. So we'll watch, but we won't put our name on the thread. We won't put a comment in because we don't want the, the person presenting or others to know I'm, I'm watching. But you watching every week. I, I peeped you. See, so so I'm not like that. I go to the sessions with people that don't have the experience in education that I have. I do that all the time. And a lot of times a presenter will say, oh, my God, Principal Cafele is in the room. They feel like they got to turn the mic over to me. I'm like, no, no, you got this. <laughs> I'm here to learn from you. See, that's called humility. That, that not only do you show up, but you let them know I'm here to learn from you. Instead of walking in there, you 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 all that, you big time. You don't even need this. You just there, right, to be seen. You know, that type of thing. No, no, I go to the session to learn from you. Hey, somebody out there watching right now, that's what you got to bring to your leadership game. Humility. You got to be humble in your leadership. And you got to realize that you don't know it all. There are people out there who are much younger than you, much, much less experienced than you, but they got something you don't have because they're in a different generation and they're seeing the world through a different lens that you can't see no more because you're too old. I can't see the world like this Gen Z, this hip hop culture. I'm not in that, but I can learn from them. And that's what I do, right? So, so with that said, Man, let me see if I got all this out the way. Welcome to the first timers, right? Welcome to all the first timers out here, right? If And don't let this be your last time, right? Welcome to the first timers, but don't let this be your last time. Go back to my, go to the YouTube channel, Virtual AP Leadership Academy, and binge watch all the ones you may have missed, right? Watch those. Right. Because there's so, so much there. I met these a lot of a few brothers yesterday. They like, I didn't know you had that. I just got your books. The books. Come on, man. You got to be with us live and in person on Saturday morning. We have doing this 134 weeks. Where you been just reading the books? So, hey, y'all. Tell somebody, ain't nothing like this on the internet. Now, somebody said, that don't sound humble. I'm just telling you what it is. Ain't nothing like this on the internet, man. Uh-uh. Not for no assistant principals. No. It don't exist. Right? This, this is it right here. Right? So let somebody know. But you know we're not just talking AP. We're talking principal. We're talking assistant superintendent. We're talking principal. We're talking teacher. We're talking layperson. We're talking mom with a son in the car. A lot of mothers say, I got my son in the car with listening while I'm going and shopping. So whomever. Let's see here. Am I done? Uh, I didn't bring any books of mine. So you, you know my books, man. If you don't have the books, go to Amazon, click, uh, type in Baruti Kafele. Get the books, man. Right? They supplement what's happening here. Or better say, this supplements the books. Right? The books are priority. Um, I'm done. Hit that share button. Hit that retweet button for me. Man, I got a guest I met a long time ago, and I'm glad I finally got him on here. This is my man. Let me bring him up here. This is my man, Principal Jonathan Kegler from, from Texas. He's from all over Texas, man, East Texas. is in the building. 
Hey, Jonathan, man, good to see you. Good morning. How you doing? Good morning. I'm great, man. I'm I'm in the backstage. I'm I'm like a prize fighter. Like, let me out the cage. Let's get at it. So, man, I'm I'm excited. I'm ready to go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I'm, I feel the same way, man. I've been in the back, man. Shadow boxing, man. I'm I'm ready. I'm ready to go. I know my form is whack, right? But but I'm ready. <laughs> but I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready to go. So 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 here we go, Ronnie. My man, Principal Ronnie Harvey, said, "Welcome to you too, man." Matter of fact, they all saying it, right? Yes, I so can't wait. so let's go. So let me tell y'all, man. Jonathan Kegler, I met him back in the day in the early 2000s. And um, and we've been we've been friends ever since. He he sent me a bio. I told I, I know you saw the email because he 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 got a he got a lot to say. And he was real. Let's go back to that word humble. He was real humble about it, and and sent me a short joint right, which is actually not a bad thing. But uh, but he, but there's so much more to him. So let me just read this, and you'll learn more about him as we get into it. Jonathan Kegler is a husband. Notice that's the first thing he says in the bio. That 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 jumped out at me. A matter of fact, y'all, y'all, come on, y'all, y'all ain't got nothing to do today. Listen, I got to do a keynote, right? But I'm still wasting some time. Listen, when I saw that, it, 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 it like, it slapped me. It's the, I mean, you could say any, anyone could say anything, and like, like I'm the sought after speaker. They, someone might say, best selling author, right? He said, husband, <laughs> right? That's a little bit different, y'all, right? He said, is a husband. Then watch the second word, father. <laughs> See, he 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 put all the other stuff later, and most of his professional stuff is not even there. That speaks that speaks volumes about the man on the screen, husband, father, coach, and inaugural principal of the Impact Leadership Academy, which is an all boys school in Aldine ISD in Houston, Texas. Jonathan is a transformational leader who has led three different low-performing schools and turned each one of them around. He is an innovative leader that created a set of no-box thinking principles. We're going to talk about that today. To empower, motivate others to reach their maximum potential, Jonathan has been married, watch this, y'all, to his high school sweetheart. Married to his high school sweetheart, Tangela, for 16 years, and they have a 16-year-old son who you want to keep your eye on if you're a basketball fan, named Jameson, who is one of the top-rated point guards in the class of 2025. So those of you who keep up with, with, with high school basketball, you go to them various websites and magazines, and you see that, that those, those, those top-rated youngsters um, or ath student-athletes for the class of 2023, 4, 5, well, his son is one of the top rated point guards for the class of 2025, Jamison Kegler. So you want to keep your eye on him for sure, as I've been doing for quite a long time. Right. So let's let's jump into it, Jonathan. Um, once again, I'm glad you're here, man. You, you, you see my energy is high because, you know, when when I bring on guests that are friends of mine, it just it's a different energy for me as opposed Sorry. to folks that I really don't know that well, you know, so uh, or don't know at all. But um, hey, Jonathan, as, as an educator, this is a question that I ask everybody that comes on here. And by the way, folks, hit the share button, hit the retweet button, let them know I'm, I'm we, we in it now. As an educator, Jonathan, who is Jonathan Kegler? I think it's what you exactly said, you know, going back to a song, because I love good old school music, but yeah. the makings of you. It, it's a little bit of everything. I, I like to bring every experience that I've had to the table. I count it all joy. I don't leave anything behind because everything that I went through, it made me who I am. I'm now able to reach and to teach someone else who's going through something similar. So I, I am a melting pot of experience that uses that to now transform and coach others on how that they can maximize their potential. So I, I'm someone who... I may have flown under the radar because I'm a very high performing student. I I'm low maintenance. Mm -hmm. I, I sit in class. I do exactly what you ask. I bring my homework back. You know, my parents are supportive. So as a teacher, I, I don't need to do anything with this guy. He already has it. Mm -hmm. So I know about that one that's that underdog that 
so many times we, we worry about the highest of the highs, the valedictorian. OK, yeah, we're going to celebrate them or, or the lowest of lows. This kid who needs intervention, you know, every single day. I'm that kid that's right there. That's that good kid that maybe you miss. Mm. So now coming into the educator realm, I now value each and every person here. Yes, we can do intervention all day long, but we're going to do enrichment. Y yes, we can do the highs. We can do the lows. We're going to do the middle too. But but not only that, my my campus monitor that sits at the front of my school, who who is the person who meets and greets everybody that comes into my school, I value you. I want you to have exactly what you need. When we talk about my custodial crew that cleans my campus, I value you because mm. I've once done that before. So no situation or no person in this building is too big or too small. And it's because I started from a place and, and I was able to get to a place through education. So I know the value of it. And so I don't want anyone that ever comes into my presence to not feel that value, not feel that spark, not feel that fire. You know, sometimes people say, you know, turn down for what? That's what I bring to the table. Anybody comes around me and sometimes they're like, hey, I don't need a motivational speech today. Or, you know, I just want you to listen to my problem. But I'm already trying to hone in and tell you, OK, if this is what's going on, what can we do behind that? So I bring a lot to the table as an educator. I, I value each and every experience, each and every person that's across from me, because I feel like you can learn from anyone. So most importantly, and kind of to put a bow on that, I'm a learner because I'm always watching and assessing whoever's in my midst. What can I take from them? How can I make myself better? So I'm going to listen and I'm going to internalize what you're doing, what you're saying, how you're moving. And then I'm going to use that to make me better, but also to bring something to the table. Um, because so many times we want to eat. Yeah, Thanksgiving is coming up. So I'm going to hit some of y'all. We, we want to come to the table and eat. But what are you preparing? What are you bringing to the table? And that's the biggest thing. If I can add value as principal, he just mentioned my principal. So, yeah, yeah. All of y'all talk about you want to be a principal, but I got a principal. He, he's been mentoring me for a long time. But he talked about we may be on AP. We may be on principal. We may be on assistant soup, soup, you name it. But what are you bringing to that table? Thanksgiving feast is coming. What are you bringing? What are you bringing, man? I I love it, and you you know you said you said a lot, but the, this one thing you said, I'm a learner, right? And I'm thinking about last week, and I'll make I'll make this very brief. I was in Newark, New Jersey, which is where I was principal at, and I was there with the the South Ward and West Ward assistant principals, which they call vice principals, and I mean, the brilliance in the room. And, 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 and these are vice principals who were striving to become principal, but the brilliance in the room. And I told them, you know, because I, I, I don't hide from stuff. I don't, I, you know, again, being humble. I said, I'm, I'm y'all teaching me. Exactly. I'm, I'm learning stuff from you. And I told them jokingly. And, and when you see it in a book that I write, <laughs> that, that what I got from you, <laughs> I got it from you. Right. Exactly. And, be, be, and see, that's what you just said. I'm, I'm that learner. Hey, leader out there watching right now, you and I got to be that learner. I'm going to share something, an experience I had um, yesterday at the, at the convening later on as it relates to learning. I'm not going to do it right now, but I want to share this with you later. But be that learner. Read, 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 and read. But then take that reading and do some writing too. And obviously do some teaching. Hey Jonathan, you know you you you're, you're that guy. You're 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 very smart. You're intelligent. You're brilliant. You're wise. There's a million things you could have done with your life. There's still a million things you can do with your life, obviously. Yes, sir. But I but I want to ask you, as I ask everybody, why education? What what brought you into education, and what continues to fuel your passion within education? Oh man, checkmate, checkmate, checkmate. <laughs> the, the latest the latest video that was produced on my school. So every school that I go to, because once again, my experience have made me what I am. I want, once won a chess championship as a fifth grade student. Wow. I'm a gifted and talented student. So I'm in a chess club and boom, I win the championship. Every school that I've been at, now I've brought chess to the table. Mm. So, so you ask me why education? Because I want to teach others the strategies, the mindset that I had as a youngster. I want to teach them 
that it's okay to do that. Yeah. I, I want to celebrate the inner innovation that they have. I want to empower them to be able to reach whatever they want to become in life. You know, so many times we, we could, and, and as you mentioned, it's, it's humble. So you don't brag on it, but when you have the mindset to be able to read, to be able to write, to be able to speak, to be able to articulate, I can go in Webster's and I can go from A to Z. I can give you any word you want to, I want to give you. But when I can make it plain and I can teach someone else, my great grandmother always said it. When you can help someone else, your life is worth living. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking for that one that I can spark. I may not be the one to change the world. I'm not naive enough to think that let little old me, something I could say or do would change it. But I guarantee you, I'm going to work as hard as I can to spark the mind of the one who will. So go. that's what keeps me going. That's my why for education, um, coaching others to maximize their potential, whether it be the game of sports, whether it be ELA, math, science, social studies, you name it. I want to coach you to take what's in front of you and to make it something better. One of the kids in the video and definitely, you know, they'll, they'll get my platforms and everything afterwards. So the video is out there. But one of the kids in the video that was was interviewed, he's my chess club president. And they asked him, what is the most important piece on the chessboard to you? Now, everybody can, that knows chess or thinks they know chess, is, I'm thinking the biggest pieces on the board. He said a pawn. Mm. So many times we want to be the man or the woman before yeah. it's our time. Like, we don't understand. And the one thing he said that flipped that thing, and, I, man, I was in tears thinking about what he said. He said the pawn because people often overlook it, but if it works diligently enough, it gets to the point where it can be promoted to a higher rank. I just said something that somebody out there missed. You, you're wanting to be promoted or elevated by man, and you're missing out the steps that you need to take to get there. That process. You know, I, I once read it in a book. You know, there was this one people that walked around the wilderness for so long and seemingly were lost. They were already prepared for the battle. They looked ready for the battle, but they had to be taken around the long way before they got to the battle so that they could be mentally prepared for what was next. Because if they'd have got to the battle before it was time, they'd have turned around when opposition came. So right now, you, you may feel like, others may feel like, kids may feel like. Like right now, I have first graders through eighth grade on my campus. So a first grader may come in with an idea that, hey, they want to have their own business. They don't want to work for someone else. So we got entrepreneurship we're throwing out there because I want to spark that mind. So I'm talking about a first grader, but I'm talking first about grade, a first, year first grade. A first year teacher may think, hey, I want to leave my own campus one day. You, you may have that idea. Get in the environment, as he just talked about, where there are people there that are teaching. You're never supposed to be the smartest in the room. So get what you can from everyone else. I always keep a notepad. I always see Principal Cafele writing. Sometimes he'll go in the back cave and he's like, okay, I'm going to write another book. I'm going to shut myself off from the world and I'm just going to write. Look at that, people. So you got that or you got your phone. Bring your phone out. Type your notes in your phone. Always write it down because as he mentioned, if I can write it, if I can speak it, if I can read it, then I can lead it. So education for me is the avenue to change the world. So many people want to sit on high horses and they want to have all these they want to pontificate on what can change the world. They, they oh, 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 no, I don't need that mic. Let me teach the youth because what I do to the least of me will then become the greatest. Let me teach the youth what it means and then let them go off and, and, and do what they need to do. So um, really excited about teaching others and, and really teaching others. I, I'm still a kid. I'm Toys R Us kid. I don't want to grow up because I'm a Toys R Us kid. I'm still a kid at heart, and I never want to lose that. So learning from others, watching how they move, watching how they grow, and then being able to see that progression uh, is something that I'm infatuated with, that I love. So that's one thing for me that it drew me to education. I can take this ball of clay, and I can mold it into something very special. And, and that's something I don't take lightly either. Education is a calling. If you're in it for the nine months, the 10 months that you're going to get, and then the two or three months you're going to get off, this week of Thanksgiving you're going to get off, man, it's, it's going into Thanksgiving break. But I'm fired up. I'm ready 
the right now, our classroom full of people. We got a we got a world that's our classroom today. And we're showing you guys how the leader is supposed to break this thing down. So education for me is a no-brainer. Now I know, I know y'all see his thunder. And see, that's 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 who's leading the school. See, I always start off with that. I'm on fire. You you see the fire, man. And see, that's it. I, I, and again, I'm not saying you got to be charismatic, but you got to bring your passion, and folks got to feel that, you know. And 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 someone asked me from YouTube to share your your turnaround strategies, and and I want to I want to respond to that by saying we we ain't even in the the topic yet. See, the topic is 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 my process one to be trusted yep. right we ain't there yet we still in the prelim right so so hit the share button hit the retweet button let them know we getting ready to bring the heat but we we not there just yet right but we're gonna be talking about the process we talking you see his shirt the no box thinking we're gonna be talking about the no box thinking principles we we talking about all that man so let me let me let me ask you jonathan i was intrigued by and i hope i pronounced this correctly principal rachel johnson yes yeah i was intrigued by the story and I, and, I, and, I, and I read it I read it all and I want you to speak to us to tell introduce to us uh, principal Rachel Johnson and tell us about her impact and influence on your path to principal leadership because I think it I, I think it speaks to the folks who are watching in terms of where their impact where their influence comes from so I wanted to highlight that oh man you 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 are you are definitely taking taking me step by step Rachel Johnson she's she's my she's the one that saw something greater in me before i ever saw it in myself i was a pe coach at an elementary school 1000 kids campus low performing going through the whole nine yards we're, we're two three year ir but i came in as a pe teacher once again faithful over the I had every single kid in the building in my in my class. No discipline issues, no fights. We're in PE. You know, kids, elementary kids are gonna fight over a ball, they're gonna fight over color, they're gonna fight over something like no fights, no anything. So she saw that and she said, Hey, I lost my assistant principal, but I want someone who has my back to be my assistant principal. Now, mind you, I'm a coach. I'm two years into to coaching, two years into education. Jameson is a baby. <laughs> I'm coaching. So I'm like, hey, I'm going back, getting my master's. I'm not even qualified yet, people. Catch, catch the whole message. But she says, I want somebody that has my back. She hires me. She takes a leap of faith on me. I'm fish, finishing up my master's to become a principal. So, so let me show you how this thing works. She hires me in May, June. She comes to me because she's getting ready to go to a conference. She says, hey, coach, my, my back is bothering me. You know, can you check it out? Can you let me know? And yeah, I'm kinesiology major. Yeah, I know about things, but I'm like, uh, I said, I, I can't really see anything. I think you need to go, you know, get, let the doctor, you know, check you out. Because so she goes to the doctor. She gets some some meds. Some, she goes to the conference. She comes back. She's still feeling that pain, but she's still going. She's still leading. Rachel Johnson hired me. And, and this story is something that I always tell because she's always with me. She got diagnosed with pancreatic cancer and she passed away the very first year of my assistant principalship. But the one thing I will tell you is she's still with me to this day. I say she's my guardian angel because she knew that she was going through something, but she still wanted to pour into me. So she was my first principal that took me and said, you're a leader. She gave me that choice. So my first year as assistant principal actually became a principal. The turnaround began then. Wow. Um, so she is one that to this day, I mean, I have her picture in my office. Everyone comes into my, they want to know about her. And, and it's, it's ironic. The campus that I'm at right now is a leader in me campus. The book that she's reading is leader in me. Mm. So, so the dots are connected, wow. but uh, wow. for, for you, I want to say Rachel Johnson was one that believed in me before I believed in myself. She spoke life into me. She gave me an opportunity. She, she allowed someone greater to work through her because so many times, and, and this is one of those turnaround principles. I just want to give one for free. So many times we look for the qualified mm -hmm. versus those who are truly called for this. Yeah. And sometimes we allow 
our position or our title at the moment or, or our state at the moment to stop us from even leaping out on faith and saying, I, I feel like I can do this. I know I can do this. But catch this. That year that I went in, we came out of IR, people. So I wasn't coming out of the gym and going into the, the principalship just, oh, I'm going in there. I'm going to blow my whistle. I'm just going to be disciplined. Discipline was the furthest thing from my mind. We were talking about strategies. We were talking about X's and O's and getting Jimmy's and Joe's and Sarah's and Sue's how to read and how to perform at a high level. So Rachel Johnson believed in me before I believed in myself. She gave me a chance and I still have her here with me to this day. Her daughters, her husband, like that. We are all family. Um, mm -hmm. It's it, it's something that I'll never forget. And sometimes not only do you have to have that one for you, but you have to be that one for someone else as well. Yeah. Wow. That's that's powerful. And that's why I wanted you to bring. I wanted to talk about her and we pay tribute to her. Mm -hmm. Sound like an amazing leader and, 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 and just what she did for you. Mm hmm. You know, in terms of seeing somebody in you that that influence that could come into that building and be her right hand, yep. you know, powerful stuff. You know, let's let's uh, let's let's jump into the topic uh, mm -hmm. again. Is my process one to be trusted? I want you all to hear this before I go to Jonathan, Principal Kegler. Um, you know, we, we, we hear the expression trust the process. And if, if you're a basketball fan and you know anything about the Philadelphia 76ers, then, you know, that's a that's a term that's associated with them. Trust the process. Their process was to lose, lose and lose so that they can get high draft picks and they haven't won a championship yet. Right. But that was their process. So then. It, so so with it, it made me ask the question is is the process first one that can truly be trusted? But then I said, let's internalize it is my process. So I'm talking to somebody out there right now and, and, and I want you to think about your own process. And is your process based on how you're walking it right now, one that you feel can be trusted? Is it going to get you to the promised land? Is it going to get you to where you're trying to get to? Is it one that can be trusted? I will tell you right now that my developed and written processes over the years over the decades always had to be tweaked i couldn't i couldn't necessarily go with the thing i wrote that one time this looks good and notice i said wrote as opposed to thought right it's thought but then it's written right but but then i see hmm i need to make a change i need to make an adjustment this is not going to get me there or it's not going to get me there when i want to get there so is it one to be trusted? And in so many cases, it was not. Jonathan, you are process oriented. I've known that about you since I've known you, I guess. When did we meet? Like 2012, 13, somewhere? Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and you, you're, you're process oriented. So I want you to talk to us about how we get to the point where we feel that this process can actually be trusted. Again, how do we get to the point where we feel within ourselves that our process is one we can put our trust into. That that is that is a, that is a heavy question, and and I'll say it starts by simply unpacking who you are. You just mentioned writing things down and, and not necessarily just thinking it, but writing it down. When when I write it down and make it plain, it already starts. The universe already starts conspiring to make it happen for me. So I I first initially have to have a plan for me. Like, I, I can't have a plan for someone else. I can't lead someone else until I know really who I am. Because when I get to that fork in the road, when I get to that conflict, when I get to that problem, if I haven't solved and worked on me, then I can't work on others. So I, I think that's the first thing. You have to know who you are. You have to research yourself. You have to go back into your closet, dig out all of those skeletons and really align them and know what's going on. Because there are going to come some points in time where conflict is going to arise. And, and, you know, pressure will bust pipes or it'll make a diamond. So so when I get to that pressure pack situation, I have to be ready. So that's the thing with me with my processes all the time. I go through a million steps in my head. I write it down. I practice it. And, and you mentioned the Philadelphia 76ers. Practice? <laughs> you know, it, it, this is confirmation, man. Practice? Yeah. yeah. Me, many about, people miss practice. Practice. Because they think they're the AI of the world. Man, AI, 
The reason why he said practice is because he practiced in his sleep. Like literally, I can lead a school, a campus in my sleep because I've done it so many times. I can lead a basketball team through a, a game because I've done it so many times. Your process comes from your practice. You have to be consumed with becoming what you are intending to do. You got to become a problem for it. You got to become a problem for the problem. And so we want the solutions. But if I haven't developed over time, you know, right now we, we get this quick instant access with our cameras, with our smart technology, literally, boom, we take a picture, it's ready to go. But back in the day, you had to take that shh, then you had to pull out the film. You had to take it to your, your local drugstore, wherever it was. <laughs> you got to drop it off. But it's got to go in that black room to be developed. Yeah. So the process, the steps, the systems, like everything in your life, as he mentioned when he wrote out my, when he when he read out my little bio that I sent him, I, I, my process and practice starts at home. If I, if I can't lead at home, how can I stand up and lead at school? Yeah, wow. Like, if my home is not right, if my home is not organized, if my home is not structured, how can I come here? So I think that's the thing. Everything has to be process-oriented. You have to start and begin with that end in mind. Whatever you want to become, write it out. Go out and find, like right now, you guys literally have the, the principal of all principles in front of you. He's accessible 24 7, 365. He mentioned all of the books, basically the library collection that he has. But now he has videos. You are right here, right now. You can literally tap questions in right now. He's bringing 134 shows. Like that's a catalog. So many people fight over that catalog in the, in the record industry. He has his own catalog, he owns his rights. So if you want to become something, you, you have to begin at the beginning. It starts at home, and then you bring it to the schoolhouse. You bring it to your business. You bring it to wherever you're going. But start the process. Be faithful over few. And then allow the many opportunities to come to you. So whatever it is, principal, I, I always look at, I, I, want to, I want to create this plan. We talk about SMART goals, right? But smart goals are only as smart as the person that's creating them. Mm. <laughs> Get it? I'm not talking about I'm not talking about being Albert Einstein, but I'm talking about how smart are you when you're sitting down and creating your goals? When you're seeing your problems, look out and find the problems in the world today. Write out the goals and the solutions that will solve them, and then you're in high demand. Yeah, gotta gotta write them out. You know that that that's powerful stuff you said, Jonathan. Uh, I, I I want people. You know, there's somebody out here you're on, but you got a friend, you got a colleague, you got a family member. They need to be on with you. You know that. Hit that share button for me. Hit that retweet button. Let them know we we here. We here live. We, I'm in Houston. Matter of fact, we both in Houston, right? Yep. So uh, we're in Houston. So 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 Jonathan, there's 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 a lot of assistant principals watching right now, and they 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 hear. They, they're, they're on with me every week. They, they watch the videos if they don't catch it live. And there's a lot of folks who want to be that instructional leader. But their, their, their circumstances, their environment, their leader, whatever it is, won't allow them to be that person. What is a process? And, and this, is, this is like one of those on the spot questions. But what is, what is an example? Because I don't, I don't need you to solve the world on this one. What is, what is an example of how an AP can develop, an, an assistant principal can develop a process mm -hmm. toward ultimately being the instructional leader that I've always wanted to be. Oh, I can give you that. Proximity to the problem. Proximity to the problem. Wherever your problem lies in your campus, in your on your school, place yourself proximal to that and then work on solving that issue. And then in turn, you get a chance to lead the instruction. Wherever, wherever the, the problem students are, wherever the problem classroom is, the classroom management issue you have with that teacher or the, the, that one class, that one grade level that's just unruly, live there, move your office there. 
have a mobile office. Don't be in your office. Have a mobile office. Have all the tools you need that you need to write up. You need to document whatever. But move and be proximal to the problem. Because if I can solve that problem now, guess what my principal is now able to do? I'm freeing them up to lead and do what they need to do. So now they look at me and they say, hey, this person right here, they're valuable. Mm. And, and and the greatest the greatest ability is availability. Show yourself available. Come up every day proximity to the problem. And I promise you, when you solve that one problem, guess what? I'm not telling you to stay there. I said, have a mobile office. So then move to the next problem. Yeah. Every problem that comes, want to take them on. A lot of people, they want to move up, but then they want to move up the chain, but they want the nice stuff. <laughs> they want the press clippings. They want to stand in front of the news camera. They, they want to jump straight on a uh, virtual AP leadership Academy. And Hey, let me, let me share what I know. No, it's not about that. Find and solve every problem in your building. And then after that, go to your principal and say, hey, what's next? Like, like send me. Put out the bat signal. Send me, I'll go. Send me, I'll go. Proximity to the problem. And I'm looking at a lot of people quoting you on that. Proximity to the problem. Toward developing that process. You know, Jonathan, you are the the new principal, not a new principal, but the new principal of the Impact Leadership Academy, an all-boys school in Aldean, Texas, uh, Aldean ISD, which is in Houston, Texas. And, you know, when, 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 you, when you informed me that you were about to make that transition, and then I watched you from afar on the internet and so forth, it, 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 it was one of those things where I said, man, you're you're doing you're about to embark on my dream right you know folks in my school knew that you know i was i was i was male and female but i was almost leading it from time to time as if it was an all-male school because I, I had put so much focus and attention on my boys for obvious reasons and 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 then as i prepared for our conversation it, it got my wheels spinning again like maybe i should like find a school that would a superintendent who's on my page will allow me to be my authentic me and an all boy and create an all boys school and do it the way I want to do it. You know, that type of thing. So, you know, you never know. But my wife probably saying, no, nah, we, we ain't going in that direction. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm, I'm going to put a plug right here. Um, uh, Dr. Goffney, my assistant, I mean, my superintendent, um, I'm fighting right now to move this to a high school realm. I think we have our high school leader right here. <laughs> you hear that, Kim? We move into Houston. Come on. Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> the weather's better. We just got to watch the hurricanes, right? So, <laughs> yeah, so 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 here, here, here somebody said, do it. Uh-oh, I should have put that in the universe. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> so, so my question, Jonathan, um, why an all-boys school? Um What's the significance of a, a school of just boys? And, 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 and with that, what are the benefits to the boys being in a school like that? Man, so this school, it's, it's ironic. When you walk in order steps, everything literally is right in front of you. All you have to do is open up your eyes to see it. Mm. I, I once read something that I want to put here. I have not seen nor ear heard. Too many times we've added to that. And sometimes when we read, we add to just because that's just how the brain works. So most of the time when you hear that, you, you hear eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. Mm. No, 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 no. Let's go back to single, single gender. But let's go back to the singularity of this. I have not seen nor ear heard. So the walk and the ordered steps led me led this campus and me to a collision course like I was being prepared for this before I even knew it. As you mentioned, I've studied you play by play, step by step. And the, the meetings that you had, the huddles that you had, those little mini edu pep rallies you had with your boys to talk to them about what it means, the way that you dress being intentional, the way that you had them to dress being intentional, like that rung in my ears. So when this opportunity came, I was like, wow. But I, I said it at our ribbon cutting. It started out as all boys then it was the Young Men's Leadership Academy. And we threw around a million different names, but the name Impact stuck out. Impact Leadership Academy. So a chance to make an impact on young males was right there at our fingertips. And like I said, Dr. Goffney, I, I can't say enough about her and Aldi Nice D, the leadership here, but she had a vision to create choices and opportunities for young men. Mm. 
Now, the choices and opportunities definitely span because we have a Newcomers Academy, we have a, a Young Women's Leadership Academy. We have a catalog, a principal cafe type catalog where we have multiple opportunities, but we want to give that family that wants their son to learn about the brotherhood, that wants their son to learn about the uniqueness of what it means to be a black and brown male in America. Like literally that's in our mission. That's in our vision. Now, do we exclude any pops? You, you better believe we don't because I can talk about Nicholas, who's one of my sixth grade students, who's a white student that made a 100 on the star interim test we don't take the star till may he's already made 100 on the full on out year release so we have brilliant minds and color or creed are not what we're looking at we're looking at young men so being able to put them in a brotherhood in an environment where they can see others that look like them, where we can take away some of the potential distractors that will come from another gender. Now, am I saying that that's always a bad thing? No way. Because guess what? The boys in the girls' school here, we're combining, and I'm putting something out there, so I'm, I'm promoting something before we've even started promoting to our kids, but we're about to have a social, a dance in December where we're going to bring the two schools together. The ultimate vision for me, so I'm putting something out there in the environment, is a Morehouse special type environment where we have acreage we separate but then we come together mm. we have sport, uh, sports facilities in the middle that we're able to share so multis can come together but going back to that single gender our, our young males can come in here every day and they can see what it means to be a male we have six or seven male teachers already that are here on campus right now that are giving them the model the mentorship we have a partnership with Prairie View A&M University so they're actually already bringing in mentors as well to help our young males. So it is to take out a lot of the distractor factors that will potentially be there and to give them a place where not only can they be celebrated, but they can be elevated. We, we also we speak to the young man's mind. So a lot of men come in and they have those creative juices, may not know how to solve them. We have a leadership course that they take as an elective offering and we have an entrepreneurship course. So I'm telling you, yeah, after high school comes college. I really want to promote college. I've taken them on two college visits already. But I'm also teaching you that after high school comes leadership, comes entrepreneurship. You can own your own. You don't have to work for anyone. So mm -hmm. I'm here to nurture that as well. So we've been able to, to have some things and, and to do some different things. As you can see, my logo in the background, that backdrop that I wanted to have here being intentional. Once again, I, I'm here. But those those gears. Like we don't have a mascot yet. We don't have a, we, we have a logo, but the gears were intentional. The impact because our gears are constantly turning like mm. we, we want to figure out what works for boys. So I throw a three word phrase out to my staff and I want you guys to park on this. How might we. How might we discover how males really learn best? Mm. Giving them P.E. every single day for 45 minutes is one. How might we discover how boys were worse? Giving them four, I mean, 15 minutes of recess after every lunch, just a brain break in the middle of the day. How might we discover how, by putting reclining chairs in the classroom so they have flexible seating choices, mm. by putting stand up where they can sit there and they can pedal throughout the class because they just need that additional movement, kinesthetic tying to what they're doing. So really being able to tap into, okay, what does this young man need? What can we do to make that better? And then let's give it to them. But most importantly, being that ear to listen to the boys. What can make your campus better? What can make your school better? And then them being able to unleash their inner greatness. I'm listening to you. The, 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 the folks in the audience hear what they hear. You hear what you hear, folks. But I'm sitting here listening and I'm like, man. I might need to get back into the schools. <laughs> I might need to get back in there in, in, in an all boys academy and, and just listening to what you're doing and, and, and what you envision mm -hmm. and, and thinking about yesterday's conference in Philadelphia and, 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 and the marriage between the two in terms of who was at the conference and what it is that you're doing, man, the, 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 the sky is the limit. It's the limit. You know, I want to I get to no box thinking. Yes, sir. And I remember, I guess it was 2014-ish, 
and you started talking about this thing called no box thinking. And then we went on to Vegas and spoke at the staff development for educators conference at the, uh, at the Venetian Palazzo on the Vegas strip. And you went in there and did that presentation, no box thinking. And I will never forget, Jonathan, I've never mentioned this to you before, but uh, a, a very good friend of mine who's highly respected in the education world, his name is Rick Warmerly. Mm -hmm. And he was a regular, and I got I got the spammers on here. Hang on a second. YouTube, I, I see it. Let me get these spammers off of here. All right, we got it. So Rick, we were, it was during lunch, and, 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 and Rick was in the room eating. And I introduced you, and, and he asked you what you were speaking on. And you said, I'm speaking on no box thinking. And I'm like, man, that's big because it's, it's something new and different. And he asked you what it was. Mm -hmm. And you went on and explained what it was. And, and then you went on and wrote the book. And then I sat down on airplanes and read the book. And I agree with everything about no, block, no, no box thinking. So before I get to my question, I want to read a passage. And here's the book, y'all. No box thinking, and notice the um, the the fire burning down the box, right? Mm -hmm. So let me read this passage, and then we're gonna jump into it. No box thinking is the ability to imagine a life that boasts the status quo and maximizes potential. To move forward in this way means to understand that th that the time is always now. Learning how to use no box thinking means making a pledge to burn the box you live in. Let me read that again. <laughs> Learning how to use no box thinking means making a pledge to burn the box you live in. By striking, striking the match that burns the box, you make it impossible to ever find yourself in that place again. It all starts with a simple question. Do I want to improve one aspect of my life? Ask yourself that, that question and then listen carefully to your answer. If it's yes, then you are ready to step out of your box. You won't be needing it anymore. Not when life gets hard. Not even when you fail and while you're at it, get rid of your watch too. Throw it back into the box you won't be needing and walk away. It's time for you to catch on fire. It's time to be more productive than you can ever imagine. It's time for you to kick down door number one. It's time for no box thinking. That's a powerful statement. So, so, so what I want you to do in the context of these leaders that are on the screen now and aspiring leaders who are on the screen, Jonathan, beyond what I read, what, what is no box thinking and how can the leaders in the audience today apply it to their work Ooh. it's the response to we've always done it that way and when i say it's the response to it i don't mean it's the 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 slide little comeback the quick little comeback of or we can just try it a different way or you know tried and true it's finding that solution that proximity to the problem that I'm talking about, but finding that solution and then saying, okay, now we're going to find go a new way forward. We're, we're never going to go back to the way we've always done it because obviously that's not working. I'm not talking about something that's working. I'm talking about something that's not working. A failed system, a broken system, a, a, a gear that needs to be oiled. Somebody has to figure that out, exactly what needs to be oiled. So nobody's thinking is I'm standing in front of the faculty meeting when you know our, our fearless leader passes away and now I have to take the watch off. And as you see my wrist right now, I still don't have the watch. I have to put it on the, the desk because I'm like, look, Rachel Johnson wanted this campus. She was working to get this campus exactly where it needed to be. That's for students to succeed. Right now, we're not meeting that requirement. So right now, don't come up and ask me what time is it or, or how much time do we need to put in for this intervention or that intervention? The time is always now. Whatever the student needs, whatever the person needs, we're going to give it to them now. So that immediate see of working on fixing the problem is what no box thinking is about. And in any excuse that you can find in any excuse that you want to throw, we're going to turn that excuse into an example because we're going to show you what's possible. When, when we put that fire to it, we're going to show you what's possible. So striking that match 
every problem that you have, every issue that you have, put it in that box, throw it in there and move forward. Now, as he as he read, is it always going to be perfect or you are you never going to have missteps? No way. But just because I have a misstep doesn't mean I'm going to stop stepping. Most of the time people stop stepping. No, keep going, keep moving forward, find a solution. And I promise you that process that you're going to go through is going to generate so many different things for you to get you there. So no box thinking is about, I'm not boxed in to only finding this one thing. I'm opening up my mind. I'm opening up my heart. I'm opening up my ears even to hear the possibilities because the possibilities are endless around me. So finding out what that is, listening to what that is, and then take that, add that to it. He, he showed you his little yellow pad. <laughs> take a picture, write it down, <laughs> make sure that it sticks. And then once you write them down, now come back and break them down. Break them down and then use that to become a problem to the problem. So there's, a, there's an AP out there, and I'm going to just use the same example, Jonathan, from before. There's an AP out there that was gun ho when they were in grad school, man. I'm like, yeah, man, I'm ready to get up in there and, and do my thing and help these kids to soar. And now they find, all I do is read disciplinary referrals all day. All I do is cafeteria duty. All I do is bus duty. I don't ever get to be in classrooms observing instruction and helping coaching teachers and helping them to become phenomenal. How do I take no box thinking and change that reality? Oh, you, you definitely strike the match but in striking the match you have to even burn up some of your beliefs and some of your systems and some of your steps on what you thought the principalship was about oh hang on you you, you got you got to hit that again because you, you you just said something you got to burn up some of your own beliefs hit hit okay. that again man so, so when we're teaching and when we're breaking down a lesson, we always talk about the misconceptions that students could possibly have when they're coming into this new learning, right, from the past. What prior interference is going to stop this student from learning this equation? We have misconceptions that we've brought in. <laughs> we have some things in the past. I, I talked about the skeletons in the closet. Did y'all just miss that? Like, we have some preconceived notions that we need to address, Remember when I was talking to you about your project, you got to write down and figure out who you are. So sometimes when we come in, we have this jaded sense of this is how this is going to work. It's going to be a perfect world. I didn't get to the all boys school until I went to three unacceptable campuses. Like you're not going to start on the top of the hill. And if you do, when you when you come off that hill, because it's a roller coaster, that life is not perfect. You're not going to understand the valley. So. Before you get to the point, you got to understand what you're bringing in, what baggage you're bringing in, and you got to handle that first. Because sometimes we chase a title more than we we chase transformation. Mm. So if you want to transform something, you can't be on the title. Mm. So what you thought the principalship was about, you have to eradicate out of your mind before you can get to that point. And then once you do that, he mentioned bus duty. He mentioned cafeterias. He mentioned referrals. All I see is opportunities. All I see is opportunities because guess what I'm going to do on the bus? On the bus, you know, you've seen some of those viral videos where people have those greetings and how they're welcoming people in. On the bus, I'm going to be the first person that sees these kids. I'm going to be the first person that greets these kids. I'm going to get me a speaker, even if I have to pay for it out of my own. But I'm going to get a speaker and then whatever music they like, I'm putting it on rotation when they're coming off the bus. I'm the first person to greet them. Principal Kefele always said one thing that is it totally transformed my thought process. Now that I'm three or four schools in, I'm looking at it even differently. And so I'm challenging some of my leaders on my leadership team to step up and do it. But what he said is every day, the kids got to hear your voice. You got to be the first voice that they hear. You got to be on that PA. You got to be speaking. So now they see me, they hear me, but I'm also training some of my other leaders. That same thing. Like, like he mentioned, you don't have to, you don't have to be a motivated speaker. You don't have to be articulate. You don't have to be any of those things. Sometimes it's just stepping out and just doing it. So some of my people are not necessarily comfortable in that role, but I'm pushing them to the forefront. No, you got to do it. But let me get back to it. When they come off that bus, I'm the first face they see. I'm the first thing they hear. I'm high-fiving. I'm, I'm dapping them up. You know, whatever it is, I'm getting them to the place where guess who they seek? We're seeking adult gratification. We need to seek student gratification because the students are going to propel you. So when those students come off those buses, I'm right there welcoming them. When they're in the cafeteria, guess what? So I'm a former teacher, right? Because I'm now in the AP role. 
What's stopping me from teaching or addressing whatever our lowest standard is as a campus? Yeah. So I got this speaker. I got this projection system. While they're eating, while they're talking, guess what I'm putting up? I'm putting the ABCs and one, two, threes if I'm in elementary. I'm putting the quadratic equation if I'm in high school. I'm putting problem solving. When they come in, I may give them a riddle. When they come in, I may give them two or three questions they got to answer. And then if they answer these, bam, I'm going to give you I'm going to give you free time. I'm going to give you what, whatever their currency is. Find the currency of the students. And when you start moving those students, man, the change comes. Notice I haven't talked about staff yet because that's the secret to the turnaround. I, I'm giving you this early. The secret to the turnaround is not the adults in the building. It's the students in the building, because if you get the students going, guess what they're going to do? They're going to take control of that classroom environment, and then they're going to challenge that teacher to teach them and go even to a higher level because they're ready for it. So get out there on that bus, get out there on car rider line and make the change before the kids even step foot in your building. And then when you do that, now everything else goes along. According to plan, if little Johnny is the one that you're constantly getting those referrals about, as soon as he steps off that bus, I'm right there to greet him. I'm right there to give him whatever his currency is, whatever we worked and figured out. I'm meeting him in the morning. And then in my schedule, because I need to have a schedule. In my schedule, in my calendar, I'm planning out where I'm going to be and what I'm going to do. And little Johnny, I'm building him in every 15, 20, 30 minutes. I'm just going to go by his classroom and just pat him on the back. It, it, I'm not even saying anything about him being an issue, about him doing anything. And especially if I know him and his third period teacher don't get along, I'm coming in there intensely. I'm just going to sit by him. Hey, what are we doing today? I'm going to be his co-teacher. See, see, you thought you were getting out the classroom, but really the classroom is where the magic happens. You know, we go to Disney because we want the magic. We want the ears. We want Mickey. But guess what? It all starts at the bottom. Get in that classroom. Get on that bus. Get in that cafeteria. Make it make sense to you, and then at the end of the day, boom, the, the magic is going to find you. Wow. Powerful. Hey, 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 Jonathan, I left this young lady on the screen intentionally, uh, uh, Principal Mary Teresa Folt. She's the Alaska Principal of the Year right now currently, and she's going to be on with me next week. But I want, I want, I want, I just want you to know she exists, and I want you to know that that uh, when I want you, uh, Principal Fulp, to know that Jonathan exists, obviously, because you're on here, and maybe you all will make that connection at some point. No, for sure. For and sure. She, uh, Congratulations she, on that Principal of the Year. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 big time. And I I met her a long time ago too, and been to her school and all that kind of stuff. So I just wanted to make that connection live with all these people watching, right? So uh, let's keep going. Hey, Jonathan, um, no box thinking. Mm -hmm. What is the difference between no box thinking and thinking outside of the box? I love it. I love it, man. You you were like Magic Johnson or something, man. You just <laughs> squishing this thing like, I, 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 it's showtime. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so every every educator, every person you've always heard, well, hey, we have this issue. Let's think outside the box. The problem that I will give you that comes with thinking outside the box is the pressures and conformity of that status quo of that. We've always done it this way of that. Always would have, should have, could have, you know, I could have been this great sports athlete. I could have been this, but you didn't, <laughs> but let's get back to it. All the times we want to think differently and say, okay, let's solve this problem. But then when it doesn't work, guess what that force and that pressure does puts us right back in that box of conformity. Mm stops us from finding that solution. So if we strike the max and burn the box, go back to it because it no longer exists. Mm. Like African-American boys, Hispanic boys, like the most highly represented population in special ed, you can go into any school in America, are those boys. Why is that? We thought outside the box a long time. Education has been going for a long School systems have been constructed and going for a long time. Why have we not solved that problem? Impact leadership steps up every day, and that's a problem that we're trying to do our part to solve. Why, why is that population not the highest represented and gifted and talented? Let's shift the paradigm. Let's shift the focus. So that's my one thing with thinking outside the box. It's been done a lot, but... The pressures and conformities push you back in. Now, when you strike that box and you're ready to burn that box, now I got to tell you, it, 
it's lonely at the top as a principal because that's probably the loneliest position in the building. And y'all got you guys think, oh, we're the most acclaimed, we're the highest, we beat our chest. It's the loneliest because when every final decision is made, when every good article is written, when every bad article is written, the principal is the one at the forefront of that. Yeah. So when you strike that bat that mo- that match and you burn that box, just know it's gonna be lonely sometime on your wall. But that's why the fire is there to keep you warm. <laughs> you know, you, you're going to have others that you're going to find that are like minded like that. Principal, he's a he's a phone call away if I need him. He, he He's a text message away if I need him. Is it a situation where you found yourself in a, a situation where you're OK? We talk about exponents in education where your exponential game changes. You got to connect with those people. So now I'm not just multiplying this thing. It's exponential. His platform is exponential. You have people in the chat right now. He just mentioned there's a principal of the year in Alaska on the chat. Not only do I need to connect with her, guess who else needs to connect with her? Guess who else needs to pick her brain? She's getting ready to be on the show soon. Guess who else needs to polish up their resume and be ready to send it to her or me? Because guess what? Next year, I'm adding grade levels. Next year, I'm adding opportunities. Next year, I'm adding leadership. Like There are a million things out there that you can attack, you can find. But it goes back to the beginning. Write it down and make it plain. Because if you don't know what you're doing, television, I'm going to tell you a vision. If you don't have your own, I'm going to tell it to you. Mm, wow. And, you know, you, you mentioned in, in terms of connecting, networking with those folks. You got Mary Fulp in Alaska. We had Ronnie Harvey, Louisiana Principal of the Year. And we had um, Rachel Shelley, Florida Principal of the Year. Right. So we, you know, we're bringing these principles of the year. Now it's on y'all because they give the contact information for you to network with them to find out how did you become principal of an entire principal of the year of an entire state? Exactly. That's that's on y'all because I'm bringing them on these platforms and I got more than I'm I'm, I'm, I'm going to be reaching out to the Philadelphia principal of the year. I mean, the national principal of the year from Philadelphia at some point. And, and then you all got to reach out. So Jonathan's here today. And, and Jonathan is a high-powered, transformational leader. Now, not the flood Jonathan's inbox, but but you got because he got he does have a lead a school. But you all understand we got to network with each other. That's how we make it happen. As a matter of fact, yesterday at the black at the, at the black men's educators convening, I said to them thousand folks, I said, "Look here, y'all in this room together." I said it from the panel. I said, "Ain't no way in the world." that you could leave out of here and not have some new contacts. And I don't mean an exchange of business cards that you will never look at. Exactly. Right. Cause I got a stack of cards at home. I don't throw them away, but I don't see them anymore. Right. I'm saying to you in terms of you getting from point A to point B, go beyond the exchange of a business card and make sure you got a new friend. Yep. <laughs> right. A new friend. When you reach out to folks on here, Right. Or when you go to that conference or whatever the case may be, it matters. So. So with that said, uh, Jonathan, let's move on. You speak of the the yo yo effect Mm -hmm. as it relates to test preparation. And and when I read that, it it, it resonated with me, this yo yo. See, I'm from that generation because I'm you know, I'm 62. So I'm I'm from the yo yo generation, and of course before me, my mom is on here, and she's 87, and she certainly was in the yo yo generation as well. Whereas today's kid might not even know what yo, it might think I'm just saying like yo, you know, like like calling somebody, right? Not realizing it was a device that was very fun to play with, and it didn't cost a lot of money. No video game and connectivity and and all that kind of stuff. Just this little round thing with a string, and learn how to be a champion with using it right it, it, i mean you 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 brought me back these memories when i when, when i read this and that duncan butterfly yo-yo man and and rock the baby somebody now the, i know the young heads on here right now you're like what, what are you talking about man exactly. <laughs> rock the baby with the yo-yo right so 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 here so you talked about this yo-yo effect and and i want you to what is what is the yo-yo effect And as it relates to test preparation and what are the implications for the leaders who are watching live or will see the video later? The yo-yo effect is, and as he mentioned it, you you got the string, 
but the, the originals you got the string you wrap it around and then you're going up and down and, and you get good enough and you can find a rhythm and consistency it'll come back to you but if you're not good enough guess what you throw it down and it just rolls on the floor <laughs> then you got to spend so much time wrapping it back up because you you didn't you didn't get it just right so the yo-yo effect with the interventions with the enrichments is i'm throwing out something but i had no plan i had no rhythm i had no rhyme to the reason so it just went everywhere and then when the mess happens, now I got to clean it up. I got to string it back up. And now guess what's happening when I'm stringing it back up? I'm losing the confidence. I'm losing the buy-in. I'm losing the critical mass. Those teachers that really, you know, want to have my back and want to push, I'm losing them. But not only that, I'm losing the students because I'm just throwing out something, but I didn't really build it with you in mind. I wasn't strategic in what I did. As he mentioned, he started going to some of the higher level. I'm just talking about going up and down. He started talking about walking the dog. He started talking about like you're making it do tricks. The most experienced, those principles of the years that he mentioned, they're able to take their interventions and it's so systemic that boom, it's like clockwork. Everybody in the building knows it. You can have a kindergartner, you can have a first grader in a school like this that can tell you about their beginning of the year, about their three week, their six week, their nine week, they're tracking it. The student can lead the conference. That's how deep it gets. Not only can the student lead the conference, but the student can tell you exactly which standards that they need to work on and they need to improve. So now that's what I told you about going back to the students and becoming a problem for the problem. If you get those students to lead the environment, guess what the teacher can now do? The teacher can facilitate, that's which right. is what it's about. So the yo-yo effect is just throwing something out, seeing what happens, but it's going up and down, in and out. It's going everywhere. There's no rhyme to your reason. So at the end of the day, you have no checkpoints. You, you have no monitoring. You have no assessments of your systems because you didn't have systems. You're just throwing something around. So it's really about the systems. Yes, I say no box thinking. So let me let me be clear on this, because some people like, man, I, I don't really want to think outside the box. I love the comfort of knowing that if it's not my fault or if I didn't do it, you know, the, the other systems will take over. Systems are paramount. You have to write out the systems. Systems have to be embedded in everything. I take risk, but I take calculated risk. Mm -hmm. I don't take risk with other people's most prized possessions. I've seen some jewels. I've seen some gems. I've seen some different things that, you know, come across as you guys are giving feedback. But that jewel in that gym sometimes may be cracked, may be dirty, may be, may be unrefined, may be not shiny. Somebody may miss the value in it. And so when they miss the value in it, that's the best that that parent has to bring to you. It's our job as educators to polish that thing up, to bring its value up a level. You know, stock market, you go and you read in the stock market, it's up, it's down, it's in, it's out. It's our job for when that kid leaves us, their stock is through the roof. Like, that's our job. So the yo-yo effect is not good enough. It's not sufficient. That's that thinking outside the box stuff because once you do that, ultimately, and especially if you don't know how to do a yo-yo, like Cafele just mentioned, we can give some of these new school cats a yo-yo and they'll be like, what is this? They want one that's automatic, like the microwave approach. They don't want, you mentioned mom on here. I know mom could throw down, right? So, so they want to just put something in the microwave real quick. They want to go through a drive-thru. Thanksgiving is coming up. And the, the thing I love most about Thanksgiving is my grandmother's cooking, Lillian Spencer. Like, I, I, she lives on Spence Street. Like, it's, it's just all just coming to me. But the, the greatest thing with me and, and the reason why, my wife, I love her to death. But she'll never be able to match my grandmother. My, my, my mother, I love her to death. She'll never be able to match my grandmother. My, my mother-in-law, I love her to death. She'll never be able to match. Nobody can ever match grandma's cooking because grandma cooked from the soul. The soul food. So I'm talking about soul food, but I'm really talking about intervention still, people, if you're not missing this. You got to build it. It's layers to it. She 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 had to put some things. She had to mar it had to marinate overnight. When she's cooking for Thursday's Thanksgiving meal, she's starting already. She's cooking up the onions. She's cooking up the bell peppers. Like I can literally walk in her room in her house right now and I can already smell the aroma. Can people walk into your building right now and already smell the aroma of change? Mm. Woo -hoo -hoo. The aroma of systems. When they walk in, what do they feel? Cafele came in and I'm I'm this young buddy principal. I had a hoodie on then too and I had to start stepping my game up and dressing a little bit better because when he comes in, he's clean and, and, and he has his tie and he just has himself just so well put together. So I'm this young principal. I'm like, hey, I'm coming in and I'm, I'm just, I'm in jeans, I'm in a sweatshirt and I'm just in the work. But I'll never forget 
the first words he said to me about my campus, because he just walked in, he just observed. He said, man, I can feel what's going on here. It's palpable. So when somebody walks in, what do they feel? Yeah. You know, giving him something he can feel, like the good old music. What do they feel? And then I promise you, if they feel it, it's not a yo-yo effect on your campus. Wow. Wow. Like somebody just say, Principal Kegler is teaching, is teaching. But I, I, I like this right here, the, the aroma of change. Right, the, 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 can you feel the aroma of change? Like, hey, somebody out there, y'all know I always got to holler at you between questions. <laughs> when you walk into your building, that that aspect of the building that you have some level of influence over, I know you're the assistant principal, but the principal is watching. Yep. Can you feel the aroma of change when, when, when you walk in a school led by you? You know, it goes back to the statement that I make all the time. When I go into a school, I want to be able to see the leadership without having to see the leader. Right. And and and, and that ties right into that that aroma of change. Do you feel it? Do you smell it? Do you sense it? Man. Hey, Jonathan, you know, you started something called Fired Up Friday. And, and I had Power Monday. So my, 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 my day of emphasis was Monday and that's that we called that the day of empowerment to start the week. And we had the young men in shirt and tie, slack shoes and a belt and the young ladies and their business professional attire. And we brought in all these guest speakers and we, you know, we, we just speak in life on Mondays mm -hmm. to young people. And then here you came with the fired up Friday and I had the opportunity of attending your school on a Friday, a fired up Friday. So I want you to talk to us. Because maybe there's someone that needs a, a, a fired up Friday or a fired up Thursday or Wednesday or Tuesday or Monday. And you call it whatever is appropriate for your school that, 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 that fits with your brand. But but here, Jonathan, what, what is fired up Friday? Man, so fired up Friday is an edu pep rally. Edu pep rally. It's a mini sermon. It's a mini pep rally. But it's also time back to the yo-yo. So fired up Friday. It was a creation because I saw a problem. I assessed the campus. I saw that the Fridays for us. Now, this was just for me in my house. I don't know about yours. But the Fridays for us were full of spelling tests, vocabulary tests, timed math tests, social studies tests, science tests. Can, can, I, can I make it any clearer? It was all about tests. So guess what Fridays had turned into on this low performing campus. Fridays had turned into the new Saturday, the new Sunday. Friday had turned into we are already on break. I'm sitting back all day. My kids are just taking tests. We're not doing anything. And after the test, sit quietly, play the games, do whatever. So Fridays for me were now a wasted day because we were losing the momentum that we had put together all year long. Now, Fired Up Friday was created, and I literally created a Fired Up Friday in, in my instructional leadership team meeting. I, I had the idea, but not only, like he mentioned, I, I wrote it down, made it plain, but I, I came to them. I said, look, I'm giving you guys two weeks. And they're like, what you mean? I said, I'm giving you two weeks notice that on this Friday, we're going to start Fired Up Friday. We're going to split our third, fourth, and fifth grade students up into ultra small groups campus wide. And what we're going to do is we're going to start in the morning. They were like, what about the teacher's conference? I said, don't worry about the conference because I'm going to give you the teacher's first 45 minutes of Friday. And I want you to work with them on whatever standards, whatever small group they're going to pull. I want you to teach them. They were like, well, where are the kids going to be? I said, don't worry about Don't worry about it, sweetheart. Don't worry about the kids. I'm going to take the kids in the cafeteria. We're going to have breakfast and they're going to have a little fireside chat with their good old principal. They were like, but you can't handle all them. But I said, don't worry about it. I got them. You just handle the adults. I said, and then what I want you to do is about five minutes before I release the students, I want you to bring the adults down right outside the cafeteria. And they were like, what do you mean? Don't worry about it. I got a message for the students. I got a message for the teachers. We're going to release them then. And then Friday is going to be intervention for the first three and a half hours of the day. So we're going to know exactly what our kids get on Friday. 
Our kids are going to get to rotate through three different levels. So what I want you to do is be strategic about your numbers. So if I'm talking to you and how you can implement Fire Up Friday, look at your numbers, look at your deficiencies, look at your low areas, performing standards, and you group in accordingly. Find your teachers. So this is a match. This is not a yo-yo. This is a match of perfect styles. Find your teachers who are performing very high in those standards. And you want to match those low-performing students with those high-performing teachers. Boom. Magic is going to happen. But so I brought the, the teachers down. And then five minutes before I came out of the cafeteria, left the kids in, and I'm playing We Ready. <laughs> I'm playing We Ready in the background. It's just on a loop. So guess what I did with the students before I left out? Hey, this is what I want you to say on repeat. That's all I want you to say. That's all I want you to do. I'm about to go out and fire these teachers up. And when they come into you, I want you to take it to an even higher level. So guess what? My kids, they heating on the ground. They, they making their own beat, but they're chanting. We ready. So what is that? That's intentional. I, I told you the first time I met Cafe, it was through intentionality. He said that word and then I, I applied it to every walk of my life. I go out and I talk to the teachers. And I give them this, this little mini sermonette where I'm, I'm pouring into them about Hey, this is what we got to do. It's cold. It's November. Everybody wants to pack it in. It's October. Everybody wants to pack it in now, but we're going to fire it up. And our Friday is going to propel us to where we're going to go. And all teachers looking around like nervous and like, what is going on? But I'm like, today is going to change the game. So Friday then went to another level for us. We, we no longer use Fridays as a testing block. Now, don't get me wrong. You do have to give your little spells, your social studies, and all those things. But guess what? Those are formative assessments that can be quickly done and you can get back to the, the, the business, which is education. So we didn't we no longer wasted a Friday on just testing and nothing else. We use our Fridays as interventions. Now, you may say I got kids that need intervention, but I got some high kids. So guess what we did? We, we, we did interest based learning for our high level kids. So they got a chance to be our our photo crew. They got a chance to be our 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 robot crew, robotics, like whatever they wanted to do, they got a chance to do that. So even our higher level kids got a chance to experience that. Remember I told you three hours, even your lowest performer in math has some strengths. So maybe he's high in reading and science. He doesn't need those interventions. Now he gets a chance to go to that interest-based learning as well. Maybe you're a high performer in math he struggles a little bit when it comes to the reading comprehension. Maybe he's an ED. Maybe he's an emergent bilingual. Maybe he needs a little bit more of those scaffolds, those ESL strategies. So maybe in reading time, now he gets to go to that reading teacher and boom. So Fired Up Friday, as he mentioned, can work for you on any day of the week. Use what you have. Make it work for you. But once again, as I told you, you may be an assistant principal. There may be an initiative that you can work on. What would it be for you to now create a system to help your interventions to go? Now, whatever time limit they give you, you may have to pare it down a little bit, but I'm giving you strategies on how to fire up your Friday. Now, if you fire up your Friday, imagine where you go for the weekend. <laughs> your teachers are not ready to leave. Your students are not ready to leave. And last thing I'll tell you on Friday, Friday, when I really knew it was working, it was two to three weeks into it. And one of my students was one of my, my highest behavior, my frequent flyers, his my math coach at the time brings him to the office. I'm like, oh no, not my math. You got my best math person in the building, and they're bringing you to the office. I'm ready to go in on them because you can imagine. I told my kids, Fire Up Friday is like a, a, a sacred day for me. You better not get in trouble on Fire Up Friday because I'm already fired up. So there's no telling what I may do to you on Fire Up Friday. Um, but no, she brought him in and she said, I want I want Austin to share with you what he's done in class. I'm like, oh man. Austin said, Principal K, I don't know what it is, but it's like ever since we started Fire Up Friday, it's like my brain is on fire. Mm. It's like I really want to learn. He, he said, I took over the math lesson today and I taught my other students. And I just told her to sit back and watch. When that happened, I knew Fire Up Friday had, had achieved its goal because Ty Whitaker, so one of the other giants in, in, in the educational consulting world, he always say, you know, He's been on if, here too. if you want, want to check your school, check the leader. Right. So so he always mentions. But I'm like, I try to flip it a little bit. And I say, if you want your school to catch on fire, then, then the leader needs to catch on fire. He says about catching a the cold then your school can catch a cold. So it's about bad leadership. But I say if your leader catches on fire. 
watch your school burn. And it's going to burn with intensity. Those gears are going to be spinning so much. The sparks are going to be flying out. Like, that's what the logo is about, baby. It, it, it's not about just gears just sitting there. Those things are constantly turning, and then we're, we're making some, some sparks fly. So this morning, when I was in the backstage getting ready because Cavele was already lighting you up, like, he caught on fire. So <laughs> as I'm coming in on the show, I got to catch on fire. So, yeah. so this is for 135, 136, 137. Like, we, we can't go back to once we came. It's the elevation time, so let's keep catching on fire. The next person, you never know when he's coming down your avenue, your street. Let's keep this thing going. Keep it on fire. That's it. And, and you know, I'm laughing at this comment I left on the screen, man. <laughs> he said, Kefele don't have to even throw out his standard question. <laughs> Kegler just pouring passion. <laughs> Iron diamond. <laughs> I love it. Hey, hey, y'all, it's 11.25. No, it's 12.25 Eastern. I got one more for you. Got one more, then we go to the rapid fire. Um, you talk about Principal K's 10 perennial principles. Mm -hmm. And I want to list them. And as you said, they're in no set order. Mm -hmm. Innovation. Empowerment. The time is now. Win the day. Branding. Excuses turn to examples. Faith, ambush 101, priority, and turnaround. Now, for the folks watching, you, I know there's someone probably saying, could you run that list again? Just rewind the video after we're done and, and, and get them. Let me go through them real quick, though. Innovation, empowerment, the time is now, win the day, branding, excuses turn to examples, faith, ambush 101, priority, and turn around. When I was putting this agenda together, Jonathan, I almost turned the whole conversation into just these 10 principles. I was I was really, really tempted. And then I said, but I wanted to get the other stuff in. So we, we get you back. You know, like, like, like I tell everybody, once I get through a certain level of number of folks, I'm going to start recycling. But for now, when I thought about the 10, I thought about, you know, you had a marquee at the school when I visited. And right on the marquee, it said, win the day. And for me, of, of the 10, that's the one that jumps out at me anyway. So I just want you to talk to our, talk to our folks in this last question before our BAM Impact questions about what does that mean to win the day? And, and, and given our process, is my process one to be trusted? So we're talking about process throughout this whole time we've been talking mm -hmm. Talk to us about that process toward winning the day. So winning the day, it goes back and, and all of the principles that he talked about, I, I've tried to embed them into everything that I've given you guys. So I want you to think about that. Those perennial principles need to be embedded into everything that you do. But if we're talking about winning the day, we're getting back to that singular approach that I told you about. That eye, that ear, singular, right? So winning the day is all about finding a way. I may not win all components, all facets, all hours of the day. But it's about working to find a win throughout the day. One win, singular. If you can continually build that pattern, then success it can't help but to find you. So let me break it down to you. And it's very simple. If I win Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I've now won the week. If I win week one, week two, week three, week four, I've now won the month. Mm -hmm. If I win month one, two, three, four, all the way to 12, I've now won the year. But it all started with that singular moment of winning the day. If I have a troubled student that has some behavioral issues, I got to work with him to find a win. If I have a teacher that's struggling to find her way, I got to work with her to find a win. If I have an AP that, that that's caught in between that, I'm fresh out of the classroom. I, I, oh, no, let me go back. Let me rewind. If I'm an instructional coach and I'm fresh out of the classroom and, and, and I used to be a teacher, so in my four walls, I'm like, this is how you teach. I go over and beyond. I do everything for my students. But now I'm outside of the classroom, I'm an instructional coach. And I'm seeing teachers take shortcuts. I'm seeing teachers maybe not giving their all. I'm, I'm seeing teachers maybe at the burnout point. 
How how do I help them? How do I find a win? So as a principal, I got to help them find a win. Now now I level up from instructional coach. Now I'm on the AP. How do I work as a principal with my AP who's beaten down, who thinks I'm just giving them all the tasks and all the assignments that I don't want to do? I'm giving them all the behavior students. I'm giving them the three Bs, butts, butts, buses, and butts. Like I'm just giving them the basic fundamentals, and I'm not allowing them to, to get their feet wet in the areas they want. How do I find a way to help them win the day? As a principal. How do I find a day when everything seemingly is going bad? My numbers are not coming back good. My, my district assessments, I'm at the lowest rating. Like everything is seemingly falling apart. But how do I find a way to win the day as a person, as a husband, as a wife, as, as, a, as a budding person that wants to? Like I was literally talking to someone the other day and they were like, well, how do you know if things are working? How do you know if this relationship? I said, look at your call log. If that person is the only one that you call, if that person is filling up your call log, if that person is at the front and center, you know it's working. Principal Kafele showed me, by example, what it means to win the day with his wife. That their partnership is one that me and my wife, we love, we watch. We like, man, hey, we can't wait to get Jameson off to college. So now we can go off and we can start taking some of these trips. Like, like we see that. If, but he didn't get to this point. By just winning the honeymoon phase, he got to that point because he won each and every day. Who did he give the biggest shout out to when he was doing the thing before he brought it, brought me in? His wife, Kim, is the center. Yes, his mom is here. Yes, he loves and adores her. But his wife, he won the day with her. So now his kids are able to succeed and to grow because he's done that. So what I want to tell you is the singular focus of winning the day allows you to trust the process because it ain't always going to be easy. Yeah. Yeah. I use some different words there because Cafele told me sometimes you got to break it down to them in their language. You know, Malcolm X was one of the greatest speakers of all times. He could go and he could give you some of the highest Scrabble count words that you ever want to mention, but he made it plain so that his people could digest it. So what I want to tell you to make this as plain as possible is it ain't always going to be easy, but I promise you, if you trust this process and you work on finding a way, finding one win, it will be worth it. What a what a conversation. What a session. Session number 134, man. Powerful stuff. Let's go through these BAM impact. Y'all hang in there. I'm, I got to do a keynote in a little while, so I got to go too. So hang on in there. Plus, I want you to get Jonathan's contact information. So hang on. Let me um, let me ask you these twenty one questions. One one word answer, one sentence max. Right. Um. So if you so if you need to do a sentence, go ahead and give it to us. Gotcha. Is education on the right path for underserved children? Yes. Today is prime example. Can true equity occur in America's schools for black, brown and other underserved students? If we fight, there's no reason why it can't. Does Jonathan Kegler's work contribute to the progress we desperately need? Yes. If you could do a reset on your life, would your line of work be different or the same? The exact same. Why do you continue to do this work? Because these people need me. What fires you up within the work that you do? Seeing the faces of the underserved. What do you love about the work you do? The change that occurs when they believe in themselves. What do you dislike about the work that you do? Not being able to make a difference and to reach every single kid. What has been your greatest victory in this work? The ribbon cutting I just had and Kamari saying his speech without looking at a single piece of paper. Mm. What was your greatest mistake in this work? Not starting it sooner. What has been your greatest challenge in this work? Being comfortable while being uncomfortable. Are you proud of your first year as an assistant principal? Wouldn't trade it for the world. Are you proud of your first year as a principal? 
still on fire from it to this day. Who inspires you in this work? My lead principal that I'm talking to right now. Oh, man. Appreciate you. What are you reading right now? It could be book, blog, article, anything. Right now, I'm actually reading a book that my students are creating. <laughs> so okay. I'm helping on the editing process. Love it. What book do you recommend for our viewers? Any and all books by this amazing leader that's leading this conversation. You can't go wrong. <laughs> oh, man. I appreciate you. <laughs> what do you want to accomplish that you haven't accomplished yet? Find that one that my great grandmother almost taught me about. Are you satisfied with where you are now professionally? No way, no how. Can continue to grow. What could you say to a viewer out there who continues to face closed doors? Tighten up your plan. Get your foot ready because you're about to kick that door down. Mm. What could you say to a viewer out there who's lost their fire? Rewind this. Play it again and again and again and again. Wow. I love it. If Jonathan, last question, if Jonathan Kegler was a word in a dictionary, what would be your definition? Fire! Fire! I shouldn't yell that in a hotel room. <laughs> no fire! <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> My phone might start ringing, man. <laughs> hey, man. I know my wife gonna say, "What the heck were you saying?" <laughs> <laughs> hey, y'all! If you appreciate it today, you know what we do, man. Hit them up with them emojis, fire bombs, hearts, praise, whatever you use. Let them know. I see it. Y'all started actually before I even <laughs> asked you to. So it's yeah, I see it. I see it. I see it. It's keep it coming. Keep it coming. This was high. This was high power, y'all. I, I needed this to get me ready for that keynote I got this afternoon. So this 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 was good for me. Hey, y'all, I brought the little back. I didn't use my mirror today, but we were in full self-reflection mode. Y'all know I don't go nowhere without this, man. Right. So I got my little bat. So Josh Gibson style Homestead Grays Negro League. You hit a grand slam out the park, man. Josh Gibson hit over 800 home runs, and they didn't want to give him credit for it in the Negro Leagues, man. Babe Ruth wasn't, wasn't thinking about hitting 800 home runs, but here, here he was. So, man, what a, what a conversation. Hey, Jonathan, um, no box thinking, y'all. Let me tell you something real quick. A lot of us as black authors, we don't have the luxury of the big machinery to push our books out. We got to use platforms like this. I'm an ASCD author, but I still got to go old school, underground, all that kind of stuff because the mainstream bookstores, I'm an ASCD author. I'm a top ASCD author. I've written more books than most with ASCD, but the, the Barnes and Nobles of the world will not stock their shelves with my books, right? That's just part of the reality of being born black, right? So no box thinking, you can get it on Amazon right now. Right. And you, you get every, you get everything Jonathan talked about and more. Right. So no box thinking Amazon just put his name in. Let me let me clear that off so you can get the exact spelling. Jonathan Kegler, you can get it right there. Um, Jonathan, how can they reach you? Uh, so they can reach me via my email. It's real simple. Coach Kegler at Yahoo dot com. So Coach Kegler, Yahoo dot com. You can find me on Facebook, Jonathan Kegler. Uh, real simple. Twitter, Jonathan Kegler as well. And then on Instagram, Coach Kegler or Jonathan Kegler, both of those. So you can definitely reach out to me by any of those platforms. One thing I'll tell you is, like he mentioned, sometimes inboxes are inboxes. But if you want to reach the top and you want to reach some of those people that are truly game changers. Now, I'm telling you, I brought in Cafele. I brought in Whitaker. I brought in E.T. Like it wasn't a seamless, easy process to get to. So if you want to really find somebody that's going to help you out, sometimes you got to be persistent. Uh, and get get to the top of that email list. And then when they find it and you find them and connect with them, uh, the magic happens. So definitely reach out um, and whatever I can do to help, whatever assistance I can be, uh, I'm definitely willing to do so. And I appreciate uh, his queen, high school sweetheart, just put <laughs> the information up there, his wife. Uh, so Jonathan Kegler, Facebook and Twitter. And she also put um, 
the email address. Yep. Right. So there it is for, for everybody. Hey, Jonathan, I, I appreciate you. Um, what a session. Yes, sir. Folks, I'm, uh, I'm humbled to even be here. So I, I want to tell you, I want to give you your flowers. I've done this, tried to do this several times in my platforms, but never had the audience such as today. So I really want to give you your flowers while you can totally smell them and enjoy them. You are a blessing to so many. Your life has truly been a game changer for me and my family, my son and my my wife. So I want to tell you from the bottom of my heart how much I appreciate the work that you do constantly. You're constantly giving to others, and that's not a thankless task. So thank you so much for what you do. I'm humbled to be able to just watch and just walk in your footsteps. So please keep walking as heavy as you can so that I can follow. you. I appreciate that. And I, and, you know, I want to piggyback on that real quick. Last Sunday, and it was it was last Sunday, my son saw me doing some work and he saw that I had this in front of me. And he said, he said, he said, what are you doing? Planning for next Saturday? I said, yeah. So 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 think about it, y'all. This I don't you know, this is not my full time. This is not what I do to make money. But I'm, it's last Sunday and I'm, I'm I'm starting the outline so that I could be prepared for a week later Saturday. That's the amount of effort I put into this thing, right? Because I want, I want, because I want this thing to benefit someone. So when I'm at a conference such as the one I was at yesterday, and all them folks coming up to me, man, I watch you every Saturday. Oh my God, I'm I'm working because of your, your, your virtual AP Leadership Academy. I'm an assistant principal. I'm a principal. Whatever it is, that's the only reason I do it, right? So put forth that kind of that kind of effort, like like principal principal Folk just said, this is your ministry. Put forth that kind of effort in your work as well, folks. Right. I mean, maintain the work life balance, but but go hard in what you want to be great in. With that said, Jonathan, stay there for me while I just run down and then we, we wrap off Mike for off camera for a second. Hey, y'all appreciate you being here. Um, solo. solo. no, no. Next week. I got the Alaska principal of the year. Principal right there on the screen, Mary Teresa Falk. She gonna bring that fire too. That's how I met her. I was let me let me tell them real quick, Mary. I'll tell them again next week. But I was doing a session in San Diego at NASSP, and it was this woman in the back of the room, like amen and me, man, and and and, and just hyping me up. <laughs> I'm like, who is that? So she introduced herself from Alaska, from Anchorage, and next thing I knew, I got an email. Come on out to Anchorage. And I went out there twice, man. She blessed me. I would have never been that last. Right? So she blessed me. And, 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 and her fire. Y'all hear it next week, though. So join me next Saturday, 1055 Eastern, for Principal Mary Folk of Alaska's Principal of the Year. Watch Sean Hurt. Man, he was dropping bombs today. Sean Hurt at 10 o'clock on Facebook Live, followed by Sheikah Houston and Dr. Sheka Houston, Dr. Tammy Taylor on Create and Educate. They were dropping some. You, you got to go back and watch their, their session from today. You got to watch that, right? Because they're talking about, talking about the young ladies, right? The girls. Watch the video. Watch their commentary. That's that's on Create and Educate. That's every third, every Saturday at 1030. Then on Sunday, my man Josh Tovar and Dean Packard with uh, Unlock the Middle. It's a middle school focus. That's Sundays at 7 o'clock. And then Roz Gaskins and Coach Williams with our Village Leadership Group on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 6 Eastern. If you don't have my books, The Assistant Principal 50 and The Aspiring Principal 50, make sure you get yourself a copy. And I might, I might also mention my newest book, The Equity and Social Justice Education 50. Subscribe to the Virtual AP Leadership Academy YouTube channel to see all the videos that you may have missed. Like and follow the Virtual AP Leadership Academy Facebook page. I didn't write my commentary last week, man. I got, I just got flooded. I couldn't. And I'm, I'm on the road now. I may write it for tomorrow. I may not. We'll see. Look out for it. If I'm going to do it, it'll be on by 10. If it's after 10, that means I just couldn't do it. I got I to speak in Boston tomorrow morning at, I think, 9 o'clock, right? A Sunday morning keynote at the Learn, Learning in the Brain Conference. They, they, they invited the kid for a conference on the brain. Can you imagine? <laughs> so I'll be I'll be keynoting that. So if I could get that commentary in on the plane, if I don't fall asleep, I'm going to get it in. And then lastly, y'all, you know, I always say it, your diet, your exercise. Take care of yourselves, man. 
I'm, I'm, I've been going hard too, man. You know, I do three miles on the treadmill. You know, I don't do all the other stuff in the gym. I just get them three miles in. I eat right. Uh, I, I slip every now and then deliberately. I see that. I, you know, I might take the one cookie right on the plane. They got the little one cookie, right? Give me the cookie, right? So, you know, I, I slip every, it's not like, no, I didn't, it's, slip's not a good word. I'll deviate. That's a better word, right? But, but for the most part, I'm, I'm taking care. So make sure you're taking care of yourself. Have a great Thanksgiving with your families, your friends, and I'll see you next Saturday at 1055 Eastern time. With that said, have a great week. Even if you're in school a short period of week, a short few days, or if you're off all week, still have a great week. Have an extraordinary week. Have your best week yet. Peace. Peace. Thumbs up. Cock that fist back. One, two, three. Bam! I'll see y'all next Saturday. Thanks for being here.